Hey everyone, it's Average Gatsby, and welcome to my guide to the soldier. And this is going to be all about the suppressive fire soldier, the soldier that has picked the Revenant machine gun as his uh, as his weapon on the collector ship. The most important decision a soldier is going to make while you're playing through the campaign is the weapon you pick on the collector ship. No question. Uh, you can have whatever sort of build you want, you can have whatever sort of ammo types you want, but really what's going to change your playstyle more than anything is what weapon you pick on the collector ship because whatever weapon you pick is going to become the weapon that you use more often to get your kills. Um, you know, you I'd recommend that you still use all the weapons uh, no matter which one you pick, but whatever one you pick on the collector ship is going to, you know, it's going to have priority for you because all of them are powerful, all of them are good, and all of them have uh, very different tasks and, you know, very different abilities. So for this weapon, and this is kind of the, you know, the soldier's unique weapon, a lot of people pick it, it's really fun to use first of all, and uh, is extremely effective. The good things about this weapon, uh, one thing, bullet damage, uh, it does a crazy amount of damage. Uh, per bullet, which is really nice. Um, two, it has a huge ammo supply. You can just fire this weapon all over the place and never have to worry about it. Um, its normal ammo is huge, and its clip size is huge with uh, 80 shots. I mean, nothing even gets close to the kind of uh, you know firepower this thing can lay out at a time. Um, some of its disadvantages, uh, it's it's kind of inaccurate, so you need to get in a little bit closer with this weapon, and that's kind of a struggle for a lot of people who are basically coming off of using the uh, Vindicator. Um, usually that's sort of the weapon of choice uh, for assault rifle users until you pick up the Revenant, and uh, they're very, very different as far as how they function, and so, you know, a lot of people have a struggle with, you know, getting used to a weapon that's not about being accurate and more about just putting down fire and uh, putting down as much fire as possible. So its accuracy uh, isn't great and its other issue would be the recoil. Um, the recoil is you know, something else that a lot of people struggle with. I think for the same reason they've been using the Vindicator. They're not used to how the, uh, the weapon you know, pulls your aim upward and uh, they have trouble com uh, compensating for it. However, uh, there's a couple easy ways to deal with the recoil. I'd say the simplest way is to burst fire the Revenant. But in my mind, if you're burst firing the Revenant, you're not really using it uh, like how you know it's meant to be used. Uh, it still can work very well, burst fire, don't get me wrong, and you'll see me burst fire a couple times in this video. Uh, but in my mind, this weapon has so much ammo; it's just meant to be. Uh, it's meant to just lay down the uh, the fire on the enemy. And so, what I do to deal with recoil is, uh, I basically very um, slowly drag down on my mouse as I'm firing. Uh, this, you know, is going to help compensate for uh, the gun curving upward. And uh, you can get it if you practice enough using that technique. Uh, you'll get to the point where you can use it all the time and you don't really have to think about it. Same principle would be on the Xbox 360, you know, uh, just very lightly uh, tapping down on the analog stick um, to compensate for the recoil. I think that's uh, a more effective way of dealing with recoil than burst firing. Uh, in my mind, if, if you're having to burst fire at a target, you're really more likely in range of, uh, more likely in Viper range than you are in Revenant range. Um, if most of your shots with the Revenant are missing, then it's probably time to uh, switch over to your sniper rifle. As you can see right here, the Revenant is extremely powerful at close range, and this gun has quite a bit of overlap with the shotguns in the game. I'd say you're still probably going to be using your sniper rifle just as much as you were before uh, because the Viper is so good at long range and uh, you know can make up for 
the revenant's inaccuracy. But as far as your shotgun goes, your revenant is so strong at close range that you probably will not be using your shotgun nearly as often after you acquire the revenant. Another reason for that is simply the ammo type. Uh, Inferno ammo is so good at causing distraction and basically causing mayhem uh, to closely grouped enemies that that sort of overlaps with the job of the uh, shotgun. One thing I uh, want to talk about is the range, the effective range of the Revenant. Um, like I've already said, there is overlap with the shotgun, um, but the main thing I just want to stress is that the Revenant is probably the lowest ranged uh, assault rifle out there. As far as, uh, not as, as far as effective range, but as far as accurate range. Um, you know, it's even worse than the Avenger at full auto. It's, it's almost comparable to how bad the Tempest is, although I think the Tempest actually has worse recoil uh, than the Revenant. However, because the Revenant is so powerful per bullet shot, and the Revenant has so much ammo, you can still use it at long range or firing, I, I would say, not so much long range, but hip firing the weapon. Uh, I recommend when you're using this weapon, fire from the hip often. You know, you've got 560 rounds uh, to expend, and ammo for assault rifles is really easy to find. Uh, you're never, you're probably never going to have to worry about ammo with this weapon. And so, firing from the hip just to, while you're moving around is uh, is a very effective tactic, and it's something that I like to use really often with this weapon. You know, you're moving from one place to another. Just hold on the trigger as you're moving around. You don't, uh, you don't necessarily need to be accurate or anything. However, when you are trying to line up shots and at a long range target, if you're trying to go for the kill and you're not just trying to lay down fire, switch to the Viper um, instead of bursting this weapon. The Viper is so effective at uh, taking out targets long range. Um, there's no reason to really use the Revenant uh, at long range when you have access to that gun. Um, let me talk to you about a uh, build for this point. Um, I'd say no question that the Revenant is better suited for hardened adrenaline rush than heightened adrenaline rush. The reason I say that is twofold. One, if you take heightened, your damage per second is uh, it's going to be less. Um, there's it's kind of complicated how damage is really calculated with adrenaline rush on um, because in game your rate of fire slows down, but then your uh, damage increases, and so you know it's it's basically the same. But one thing to note is that with heightened. Um, the speed slows down by 70%, your damage increases by 140%, but that's not exactly even. Um, there's comments on the uh, Bioware forums about how this math actually works, but basically, your high rate of fire weapons are not really well suited to heightened adrenaline rush. Um, they're much better suited to hardened. And this is especially true for the Revenant for the second reason, which is survivability. You're a suppressive fire soldier, which means you need to spend as much time as possible out of cover and laying down fire on the enemy. And so to that end, you want to use every tool that you have to increase your survivability. I'd go so far as to say uh, even taking less weapon damage and replacing it uh, with health on your passive. You know, you might want to go with... Um, I forget what it is right here, but the uh, the passive that gives you the health boost instead of the weapon damage and storm speed boost for this weapon. Uh, that's you know that's how I feel that uh, this weapon is meant to be used. You've got to stay out of cover and firing as much as possible. Um, Harden works really well, not so much for keeping you alive. I, I think a lot of people make that mistake 
when using it. They think it's something that's going to... They activate it, and then they pop out a cover, and they've got basically full health at that point. You know, full health, full shields. They activate it, and they think, okay, I'm going to be able to stay out of here, out of cover for longer now. That's not at all how it works. What it's really supposed to do is you activate it when you're low on health. You activate it when you're down to your health bar. You know, maybe you've got about 50% left on your health bar. And it lets you be able to pop out a cover and uh, just get more shots with it because you're taking less damage. As soon as your hardened adrenaline rush disappears, fall back into cover and, uh, you know, activate a meta gel or repeat the process if you still think you have enough health. I was using cryo ammo right here just to show, you know, this weapon is, uh, is really good with cryo ammo as well. Anyway, the video is wrapping up, so I'm Average Gatsby. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.